Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Ralph Rangnick wants Amadou Haidara as his first signing as Manchester United manager. 33 million pounds should be enough for Amadou Haidara. Obviously, Ralph Rangnick will know the player well because Rangnick used to manage RB Leipzig. When he was at RB Leipzig, he got them to the final back in 2019. He's also managed Schalke before. Revert back to 2011, he won the German Cup with Schalke. He also got Schalke to the Champions League semi-final. He's been coaching for a very long time. Manchester United have reached an agreement with Locomotive Moscow for Ralph Rangnick to become the interim manager until the end of the season. Then he will take a consultantry role for up to two years. Rangnick will be in charge for the game against Arsenal next Thursday. Won't be in charge for the game tomorrow as he's been working for his work permit. Manchester United will get a permanent manager at the end of the season. We'll get either Mauricio Potocino or Eric Ten Hag. Now, of course, you know the news on Potocino. Revert back to earlier on this week, you know, Potocino came out and said that I'm happy at PSG. And he won't let the Man United rumours distract him. You know, PSG rejected Manchester United's move to appoint Mauricio Potocino. Earlier on this week, there was reports saying that Potocino was interested in the Manchester United job and the Manchester Evening News came out and said that Man United are confident of appointing Mauricio Potocino as the next permanent manager. And it did mention that Man United agreed to pay the ten million compensation fee for Potocino. Revert back to when Manchester United sat Jose Mourinho. Man United should have then got Potocino, but the club decided to go with Solskjaer instead. I do think Potocino is a good manager despite him hardly winning anything. I think he has won a cup with PSG. Um, he is proven in the Premier League because before he managed Tottenham, he endured five and a half years at Tottenham, analysing the vast majority of his tenure at Tottenham. Tottenham were competing in and out of the top four. You know, when Potocino was Tottenham manager, he nearly won the Premier League with them. And he also got Tottenham to the Champions League final back in 2018. And that was Tottenham's first ever Champions League final. And before Potocino managed Southampton, he only enjoyed a short tenure with Southampton, but he still managed to guide Southampton to their highest ever finish in the Premier League. So they're the clubs he's managed in the Premier League so far and before he's managed Espanyol. Uh, Potocino has got a full season left on his PSG contract. 
Um, Eric Ten Hag. is interested in the Manchester United job. Ajax will not stand in the way if he wants to leave at the end of the season. Is Manchester United's alternative target so if Man U can't get Potocino, then they'll try and get Eric Ten Hag. Eric Ten Hag is a good manager. You know, he's done really well at Ajax. You know, he's won some trophies with them. I like the way he develops young players. He's been Ajax manager for four years. He's got a contract with Ajax until 2023. Before Ajax, he managed Utrecht. Before, he managed Bayern Munich's reserve team. And before then, he managed Go Head Eagles. Brendan Rodgers. Uh, there has been talks about him, but I've disregarded Brendan Rodgers coming to Manchester United. Because not so long ago, Rodgers dismissed links to the Man United job and he said, I'm proud to be at Leicester. Earlier on in the season, uh, reports said that Rodgers was house hunting in Cheshire and that stirred some suggestions up. At that point, it said Rodgers was the favourite to replace Solskjaer. There is a lot of United fans though that don't want Rodgers in as Man United manager. Rodgers has been contacted by Man United. So there you go. Um, at the moment, Michael Carrick is the interim manager. Uh, the game against Chelsea tomorrow will be his last game in charge as the interim manager because obviously we're getting that Ralph Rangnick in. Michael Carrick won his first game as the interim manager against Villarreal, Manchester United won 2 0. Reflecting on the win against Villarreal, Manchester United qualified for the last 16 of the Champions League with still one game to spare in the group stage. I give Michael Carrick a lot of credit in that game against Villarreal because I like the way. He approached the game, his game plan was correct and his substitutions were correct. Michael Carrick got announced as the interim manager last Sunday morning following the dismissal of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But I am delighted that we're getting that Ralph Ragnick in. That means Manchester United don't have to stick with Michael Carrick for the long term. Manchester United have sacked four permanent managers since Ferguson. Uh, Man United sacked David Moyes, sacked Louis van Gaal, sacked Jose Mourinho and sacked Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Manchester United have got a very, very good squad. And hopefully, um, under Ralph Ragnick, we're going to get the best out of these group of players. You know, look who we've got in the team. You know, you've got the best player in the world overall in Cristiano Ronaldo. You know, Ronaldo scored in the 2-0 win against Villarreal. It was a lovely chip over the Villarreal goalkeeper, but Ronaldo's goal came from a poor clearance from the Villarreal goalkeeper. That's 10 goals now for Ronaldo in all competitions since he re-signed. 
Ronaldo could have had a couple of more goals in the 2-0 win against Villarreal because he had a good chance from a tight angle, just went wide. He had a chance in the first half from a header, you know, straight at the Villarreal goalkeeper. Uh, Ronaldo's got two assists since he re-signed. Uh, he got an assist last weekend in the 4-1 defeat to Watford and he also got an assist in the 3-0 win against Tottenham. Ronaldo has got back-to-back -back awards since he re-signed. You know, he got named Player of the Month for October. He also got named Premier League Player of the Month back in September. Ronaldo has won 32 major trophies in his playing career, including five Ballon d'Ors. Ronaldo's got a contract with Man United till 2023. There's an option of a further year. Ronaldo receives £480,000 a week, so he's the highest earner at Man United. You know, Ronaldo wears the number seven shirt. And we've got him for £19.8 with add-ons included. You know, Man United paid like £12.7 million up front <laughs> you've also got Jaden Sancho that's a good player as well Sancho played very very well in the 2-0 win against Villarreal he was our best player. Uh, we saw Sancho score his first goal. For the club, it was a good goal as well. He hit it from the right of the box and it went in off the inside of the crossbar. It's Jaden Sancho's best game so far. Hopefully from now on, we can start to see the best of Sancho. Obviously, we didn't get the best out of Sancho when we had Oli because obviously... Oli played Sancho out of position and there again there was quite a few games Sancho didn't even play in when we had Solskjaer. I said Sancho will do well at Man United providing that is used correctly. You know, it does take some players time to settle in. Man United got Sancho in a deal worth seventy eight million with add ons included, you know, Man United paid around seventy three million up front. Sancho's got a contract with the club till June 2026. There's an option of a further year. And you've got Mason Greenwood. That's also a talented player as well. Greenwood's obviously not available at the moment because he's out with COVID for, what, a few weeks. Greenwood scored four goals in the league so far this season. He scored a stunning goal in the 4-2 defeat to Leicester earlier on this season. Uh, Greenwood did play in the 2-0 defeat to Man City. Um, he was actually playing alongside Ronaldo up top. Obviously, the Greenwood and Ronaldo partnership doesn't work out. Most of the time, Greenwood plays on that right wing. At one point, Greenwood went a while without scoring, but... I think he's been a revelation since he broke into our senior squad. You know, Greenwood made his senior debut for Man United back in 2019. He's been a United player since the age of seven. And last season, Greenwood signed a new four-year contract with the club. You got Marcus Rashford. That's also good as well. Credit to Rashford, I thought he made an impact when he came on against Villarreal recently. You know, made some good runs in behind Villarreal's defence and he had a good chance from a tight angle, produced a good save from the Villarreal goalkeeper. Um, he's done well in quite a few games since he come back, Rashford, but he's also enjoyed some poor games as well. Uh, most of the time now, Rashford plays on the left wing. Well, we need to keep him there because that's where he's mostly effective. At one point, Rashford was out with a shoulder injury for a while and at one point, Rashford had to have an operation on his shoulder. You know, Rashford's been part of the club for a long time. He's been a United player since the age of seven and he's been in our senior squad since 2016. 
Rashford's got a contract with the club until 2023. Uh, Medicine Cavani, he's another good player for Manchester United. Uh, Cavani initially lost his place in the team, though, with the club obviously re-signing Ronaldo last summer. Cavani, I think, is leaving next year, but I can't say I want him to leave with the impact he's made since he's come in. Cavani is out with injury at the moment until December. He had an injury earlier on this season. Cavani has got under a year left on his contract. Back in May, Cavani signed that one-year contract extension. This season is his second full season at Man United. We got Cavani on a free transfer from PSG. You've also got Bruno Fernandes. That's um, an exceptional player. But Fernandes has had poor games this season. But uh, Fernandez did make an impact when he came on in the 2-0 win against Villarreal because he did get an assist for Sancho's goal. Fernandez surprisingly didn't start against Villarreal. Uh, Donny van der Beek started ahead of him in that number 10. Fernandez starts the vast majority of Man United's games, doesn't he? Fernandez has been consistent in most of his games for Manchester United. He's one of the best signings we've made since Ferguson retired. You know, we got him from Sporting Lisbon back in January 2020. He's been a United player for almost two years now. You know, Fernandez has won awards, reflecting on his good performances for United since he's come. Earlier on this season, Fernandez did make it clear that he wants to stay at Man United. And when he first came to Man United, he said, I've come to Manchester to win trophies. Fernandez has got a contract to Man United till 2025. There's an option of a further 12 months. Donny van der Beek, he's another good player as well. I'm hoping from now that Donny van der Beek gets the opportunities that he's been demanding. You know, van der Beek didn't get enough opportunities uh, when we had Solskjaer. And reflecting on that, van der Beek was frustrated. Like I said, not so long ago, van der Beek started against Villarreal recently and he put a very good performance out. He came on in the 4-1 defeat to Watford, did van der Beek, and he made an instant impact. Obviously, he scored. That's only his second goal for the club. Uh, towards the end of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's managerial tenure, uh, Van der Beek did confirm that he wants to leave in January. You know, Manchester United got Van der Beek for £40 million with add-ons included. We paid like £35 million up front. Van der Beek's got a contract with the club till 2025. There's an option of a further year. And he's versatile. He can play in three different roles. You know, he's been at Man United for over a year and a half now. You know, this season is his second full season at the club. You've got Paul Pogba, he's also a good player. He's not only a good player, he's an imperative player as well. You know, Pogba did enjoy a good start to the Premier League season. So far, Pogba has got seven assists. Pogba produced good performances for Man United in the last couple of months of last season as well. But at one point last season, he was out with a thigh injury for a while and he has sustained some ankle injuries at Man United. As you all know, Pogba's not available at the moment. Uh, Pogba's out of a thigh injury. He suffered the thigh injury in France training earlier on this season. So Pogba may never play for the club again. 
because revert back to earlier on this season, it said Man United are prepared to sell Paul Popper in the January transfer window. Well, it makes sense to cash in for him in January rather than let him go on a free next summer. Because Popper's current contract at Man United expires next summer before the start of this season, Popper rejected a new Man United contract offer. Uh, Pop has had a long-running transfer saga. He's been relentlessly linked to Real Madrid. His former club Juventus have been in for him. He enjoyed four good years with Juventus before he rejoined us. PSG have been in for him. Barcelona have been in for him. And Inter Milan have been in for him before. Popper's agent, Mino Riola, has been working hard now for quite some time to get his client a move away from the football club. This season is Popper's sixth season at Man United since he rejoined. He's won three trophies at the club so far and Man United paid £89 million for Popper. So reflecting on that, he's our most expensive signing at the moment. And then you've got Amon wan -Bissaka. That's a good right-back defensively. But the attacking side of his game is not so good. And these aspects of Aung Wan Bissaka's game that's got to improve. He's got to show more attacking intent. His position has to improve. His crossing needs to improve a bit more. But despite that, he's still one of the best right backs we've had since Neville. You know, Bissaka played in the 2 0 win against Villarreal and put a good performance out. You know, he did well to keep Dan Juma at bay. Man United got Bissaka for £50 million from Crystal Palace back in the summer of 2019. This season is his third full season at the club. And you've got Luke Shaw, that's a good left-back overall. But Luke Shaw has certainly not proven how good he can be this season. And I'm shocked in that aspect because last season Luke Shaw was superb. He was far superior last season to how he has been so far this season. I'm sure at some point Shaw will regain his form. Shaw's got um, a head injury, hasn't he? Um, he got the head injury in the 4-1 defeat to Watford. Um, reflecting on the head injury, he missed a 2-0 win against Villarreal. You know, Tellez started ahead of him. Shaw may not, may not be able to play against Chelsea tomorrow. His injury prone, Shaw, which is a concern. You know, Shaw's... Been a long serving player at Man United. He's been with us for seven and a half years now. And he's been our first choice left back for a while. He's got under two years left on his Man United contract. You've got Telez, that's also a good left back. I haven't had a great deal of a perception on him, though, at Man United because he doesn't really play, does he, Telez? But in some of the games he has been involved in, he's been consistent. You know, Telez put a very good performance out in the 2 0 win against Villarreal. He was good defensively. He provided that width. He got in some good positions and he threaded some good crosses into the box. I'd like to see Telez start tomorrow against Chelsea. Earlier on this season, Telez was out with injury, don't forget. The reason we brought Telez in was to provide competition for Shaw. You know, Man United got Telez for up. 15.4 million with add-ons included. And then you've got um Raphael Varane, uh, that's a very very good center half. Varane's not available at the moment though because he has got a hamstring injury. I think he's out for another 2 weeks is he or 3. Second injury, Varane's injured at Man United because revert back to earlier on this season, Varane had a groin injury and he was out with that groin injury for a few weeks. You know, Man United got Varane for 34 million. Well, that's what we paid up front, 34 million. I think with the add ons included, it was like 41 million. Varane's got a contract with Man United till 2025. There's an option of a further year. Uh, just before the Kick-off against Leeds, uh, Varane to Man United was official. That was obviously the opening day was Leeds. And you've got Eric Bailly, that's a good centre-half as well. My only element of concern about Eric Bailly is injury-prone, so in that aspect is a liability. Towards the end of last season, Bailly signed a new contract with Man United till 2024. There's an option of a further year. 
but he's only made three appearances so far this season. He's in contention to play tomorrow because, like I said, Varane's injured and, of course, Harry Maguire is suspended. And obviously we've got De Gea, that's a very, very good goalkeeper as well. De Gea's done really, really well this season. He deserves credit. You know, De Gea recently did well in the 2-0 win against Villarreal. He made some world-class saves. He did well in our last league game against Watford, even though we lost 4-1. You know, he saved two penalties against Watford and he made some other good saves in the game. I think he's one of the best keepers in the world, is De Gea. You know, this season is De Gea's 11th season at Man United. He's been a long serve and he's been with us since the Ferguson era. You know, he has got under two years left on his contract and he receives 375 grand a week. But De Gea has won everything domestically at the football club and he's made over 500 appearances for Man United in all competitions. Uh, revert back to the summer, you know, De Gea reclaimed that number one spot because he did decide to cut short his holiday by two weeks to fight for the starting place. And at that point, he said De Gea is determined to fight for his Man United future. And Henderson's a pretty decent goalkeeper as well. So, yeah, there is really, really good players at Manchester United. You know, Man United must have spent over a billion pounds in the last eight years since Ferguson retired, that is. And we must have brought a good 40-odd plays in since Ferguson retired. These players, though, at Man United, that don't even get in the team. You know, you've got Teles that doesn't get in the team much. You know, you've got Jones that doesn't get in the team. I think Jones and Teles will be both leaving Man United next year, if I'm going to be honest with you. Eric Bailly... You know, he doesn't get regular game time. You know, he lost his place in the team a while ago, obviously with the signing of Varane in the summer transfer window, and obviously Lindelof's being preferred to Bailly. I think Bailly's going next year. Uh, Henderson, he's another one that doesn't get in goal now because, like I mentioned, De Gea reclaimed that number one spot back. Henderson's only been in goal for one game so far this season. That was West Ham in the cup. At one point, Henderson was out with COVID for a while. But revert back to last season, you know, Henderson got that number one jersey. It wasn't at the start of last season. I think it was like past the midway point of last season he got that number one jersey. And, you know, the lot's another one that doesn't get in the team. You know, the lot will only play when Amwan Bissaka is not available. The lots are back up right back to Bissaka, but in some of the games the lots been involved in, he's done quite well to his credit. You know, don't forget last season the lot was out on loan with AC Milan and reflecting on that he gained some experience. We got the lot around three years ago from Porto, paid nineteen million pounds for him. You know, Van der Beek is another one that doesn't get much game time, but hopefully from now he will get the game time. He's been demanding, revert back to what I mentioned earlier on in this video. Uh, Jesse Lingard is another one that doesn't get in the team. You know, Lingard's only made one start this season, and that was West Ham in the Carabao Cup. I think Lingard's leaving Man United next year because the other week uh, BBC Sports said that Lingard's future at Man United is in doubt. After talks over a new contract collapsed, Lingard's current contract at Man United expires next summer. He said not so long ago Lingard could leave Man United for just £10 million. Lingard's been part of Manchester United though for a long time, hasn't he? You know, he is not part academy. Now, I heard that West Ham want to re-sign Lingard and... You know, the second half of last season, he enjoyed a four-month loan spell with West Ham, and I heard that Lingard wants to go abroad. <laughs> um, Juan Mata, you know, he's another one that doesn't get in the team. Um, I think Matt is leaving Manchester United next year. Matt's contract at Man United expires next summer. 
Uh, Martial, he's another one that doesn't get in the team. But surprisingly enough, he started on the left wing in the 2-0 win against Villarreal. He'll leave next year, will Martial. Martial's not good enough to represent the club. Um, Imad Diallo, you know, he's another one that doesn't get in the team. He has made a, what, a few first-team appearances and revert back to what I said at that point. You know, he looked a good asset for the first-team squad. We got Imad Diallo in a deal worth £37 million from Atalanta. You know, a Man United paid like £19 million up front. You thought of what we paid for him, you know, he'd have played a lot more in the first team than he has. So, there you go. And Matic, you know, he doesn't get in the team much, but he still can get his opportunities. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you with. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.